kidney disease, you can improve your GFR numbers in any stage of the disease, says science. Stage 5 included. But only if you are not making any of the six mistakes of this video. Get in here if you are a kidney disease patient and your goal is to avoid ending up depending on a machine, there are six dangerous and extremely common kidney damaging mistakes you must avoid. Now guys, I believe that most of you following me right now already know that end-stage renal disease can be avoided, alright? You probably already know that reversing kidney disease is possible in all the stages. And this is why you are probably already following the right diet and lifestyle and taking all the right vitamins and supplements without disregarding your doctor's orders and that's good but what happens if nothing works what if the lab results keep getting worse and worse despite all of your best efforts well maybe you are making one of the six mistakes i will share with you today don't miss our number one in particular because that is something that could lead to a very fast decline of kidney function. So guys, today we are making sure you are not falling for any of these dangerous traps. Let's see what they are immediately. Starting with number six, eating the wrong kind of produce. Don't get fooled by the fact that this is just our number six. Eating the wrong veggies can have very bad effects on your kidneys. This is an especially sneaky bad habit because it's not dangerous for the general population, only for those with kidney issues. But what veggies are the worst for CKD patients? If you said potatoes or maybe rhubarb, you are, well, only partially correct. There is something worse, however. I'm talking about conventionally grown produce and their pesticides. It's recent news that the European Union decided to scrap its plans to cut the use of pesticides in half. Now this is probably the millionth time in my life that I see politicians totally disregard people's health. Because while most people will only see this as a loss for the environmentalists, it's people's kidneys I'm worried about. Now, this is not a problem just for people in Europe. When it comes to pesticides, places such as the US or the Philippines or India are even worse for kidney patients. Because, you see, due to overuse of pesticides, many conventionally grown foods can actually be very bad for you. I'm especially talking about foods containing cadmium. Okay, but what is cadmium and how can we avoid it? Cadmium is a very underestimated danger today, especially because it's not actually that bad for the general population. They can easily get away with it. You see, cadmium is a highly toxic heavy metal and it has a half-life of 10 years in the body. It mainly accumulates, you guess it, in the kidneys and it can even cause renal failure. The kidneys are supposed to excrete cadmium and this means that it can accumulate more in people with a reduced GFR. And as I was saying, certain conventionally grown foods are a source of cadmium exposure. For example, grains and cereals are some of the food group that contribute most of the dietary cadmium exposure. Eating organic grains and cereals such as barley, corn, oats, rice, quinoa, buckwheat will help. It will reduce your exposure to this dangerous heavy metal. Another way to reduce cadmium exposure is to avoid animal-based foods. Luckily for us, cadmium is way more easily absorbed from, you know, meat and fish than veggies. So be careful and consider sharing this video with a friend if you think this info is useful and give it a like. 
Now, another very misunderstood bad habit that I see even some of you guys doing is number five, not taking a holistic approach to CKD. I recently made a video to help people treat the root causes of CKD. This video was all about how a CKD patient could treat diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels naturally. And I thought it was an interesting video, but in that video, I received this comment. There are thousands of other videos on YouTube that discuss how to lower cholesterol levels and treat diabetes, so don't waste the videos that are supposed to be regarding the kidney problems. Now, at first, I didn't understand why this person was complaining, but then I got it. This person is making a serious mistake. They believe that CKD is an isolated problem, that it should be cared for in isolation only with treatments aimed at the kidneys and just the kidneys. But that never works. You see, the kidney should be basically considered part of a larger system in the body, the cardiovascular system. The implication here is that what works for, you know, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and so on in the general population doesn't always work for people with CKD. This is why we need a holistic approach, all right? A holistic approach means simply that we must treat the system as a whole and not focusing just on one organ or one symptom. But why is this important? Look, this is basically the first lesson they teach you in medical school. The body is a whole and it acts as such. The human body is not like a car where you can simply swap out the problematic component and get back on the road. There is more to the human body than to a car. An example of this is diabetes. Diabetes doesn't just raise your blood sugar levels, it also raises your bad cholesterol while decreasing your good cholesterol. Consequently, diabetes also causes high blood pressure. So the person that asked that question probably didn't know that people with diabetes should be very careful with their cholesterol levels and that these issues should be treated in a different way from the general population. And all these issues damage the kidneys, all right? And when this happens, it's impossible to treat the kidney without taking care of the whole body holistically. So don't make this serious mistake and consider watching the video I was referring to if you missed it. That's a good way to take a more holistic approach to kidney health. Up next, a dietary mistake that's incredibly common today. Number four is following a diet with a name on it. That is not your name. Fact, if you have kidney disease or diabetes, you should be following a diet but not any diet. A diet that has been made specifically for you and not for anyone else. Now guys, most influencers on YouTube or TikTok will tell you to eat exactly one portion of this a day or 200 grams of that a day or something like that. Or they will even try to flat out sell you a booklet or a guide to start their diet today. They did this with the Atkins first, then the keto, then the paleo and the carnivore now. But following any of this can be a huge danger for anyone with kidney issues. Look, I'll be blunt on this. If you are following a diet that has a name on it that is not your name, you are taking a huge gamble. And that's especially bad because what's at stake here is your own health. And guys, I get it. The diet people need to follow if they want to slow down CKD is not easy. There are many limitations involved. Many people still need to avoid potassium. Most people need to avoid sugar and high glycemic foods. And basically anyone with kidney disease needs to limit protein intake. But it's the only diet that works. Now the thing is, even just Planning a diet that adheres to all of these restrictions is a task that may take hours of work for a dietitian. And clearly, for someone with kidney disease, having to follow this diet every day is 
not a walk in the park either. But you need to do it, all right? Because it can make a difference. It can delay and stage kidney disease by years, sometimes by decades, especially if you are following this diet instead of a random fad diet. Now, if you are following a diet that was not made for you specifically, don't panic just yet. But I absolutely recommend you to consult a renal dietitian and to start a diet made for your necessities because this can really make a huge positive difference. Just like avoiding the next mistake. Number three, not monitoring your levels. Fact, if you have kidney problems, you must be able to understand and keep track of various levels in your blood analysis. Look, there are many doctors that still today would only take a look at your creatinine levels, maybe your potassium levels and call it a day. But there are certain markers you absolutely cannot afford to underestimate. Let's take a look at what they are. First, CO2 test or serum bicarbonate. This is a common test usually done as part of an electrolyte or basic metabolic panel. You should do this every three to six months depending on the stage of kidney disease you are in. But not all doctors prescribe these tests regularly enough, nor do they care about them. But why is this important? What the serum bicarbonate test tells you is how acidic or alkaline your body is. And this is extremely important. If this level is too low, it means your kidneys are being damaged. So, Take a look at the level of CO2 or serum bicarbonate in your last blood test. The normal range is 23 to 29 mL equivalents per liter, all right? Lower than this and you need to take sodium bicarbonate or to change your diet or both. Never let this go untreated. Statistics say that approximately 40% of those with stage 4 CKD have too low serum bicarbonate levels and this will cause kidney damage, among other issues. Another very important test is phosphorus levels. This is also very important and it's also a level that goes up when your serum bicarbonate goes down. Why you may ask? Because most of the acid in your body and most of the phosphorus as well are coming from meat, fish, dairy and packaged foods, all right? This is why people that are not following a plant-based diet correctly will have both high phosphorus levels and low serum bicarbonate levels. Don't underestimate any of this. If either serum phosphate or serum bicarbonate are out of range, you are risking a fast decline in kidney function. Excess phosphorus in particular is like poison for your kidneys. So take a look at your serum phosphorus levels. For stage 4 or 5 CKD patients, recommended serum phosphate levels are below 1.5 mmol per liter. If this level is too high, take action immediately. Consult your doctor and consider making changes to your diet. Remember, meat, fish, dairy and packaged foods is where all the bad phosphorus is. These are the first things you should remove. If that is not enough, consider a phosphate binder such as calcium carbonate. Another level that if too low will cause a fast decline in kidney function is iron. Now this level is too low in so many CKD patients that some doctors have been caught completely disregarding it because iron is supposed to be low in CKD they said. And well, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that most of their patients are ending up with end stage kidney disease. Look, even if some doctors don't care, anemia is one of the most dangerous complications of CKD. If you haven't treated anemia, you are not going to improve your GFR numbers. Unfortunately, anemia is both very common and very overlooked in CKD patients. You see, according to studies, only 4% of people with anemia are receiving the appropriate attention. However, we also know that more than 50% of men with CKD have anemia. And when it comes to women, 70% or more have anemia. What this means is that there is a very high chance for someone with CKD to have this condition without receiving the appropriate treatment. Make sure this doesn't describe you. 
Now, anemia is too big of a topic for me to go in depth about it here. But if you are having symptoms often caused by anemia, such as fatigue, headaches, hair loss, or if you always feel cold, consider learning more about this condition. And I have made a recent video about it. It's up here and also down in the description. Now guys, for some people, having one or more levels out of balance could lead to a potentially even more dangerous bad habit. Number two is not being careful with supplements. So let's say that your CO2 or your phosphorus is out of balance. You are worried and your doctor takes too long to give you a solution. So maybe you start to take some bicarbonate for the CO2 and start taking Tums for the phosphorus or maybe some chitosan. Then you add in a calcium supplement and a multivitamin because you've heard they help. And maybe also some alkaline water and an herbal remedy. Sounds like something you will do? Well, I certainly hope not. And now you may ask, but Catherine, you recommended most of those supplements. Why are they bad now? Well, I have recommended some of those things, but not all together and not all started at the same time. Look, I want to be very clear on this. If you have CKD or diabetes or if you are taking prescriptions in general, it's never a good idea to start taking several supplements all at once, all right? Because while all the supplements I talk about here are safe, for most CKD patients, some people may react differently to them. You may have an allergy or maybe you are taking a medication that has interactions with a supplement or maybe a supplement you bought is low quality. Some supplements may also have side effects. So does this mean that you should not take supplements? Well, not at all. It means you should be careful, all right? If you are starting any new supplement, make sure you are taking notes. Write down when you started taking it and in what dosages. Write down if you have any odd symptom after taking it. And most importantly, take a look at your blood tests or at whatever level you are trying to improve and make sure it's helping. So for example, if you are taking tamps for your phosphorus at your next scheduled blood analysis, double check that it is working, otherwise the dose needs to be adjusted. This would also be a great time to make sure your personal health journal is up to date. Okay, time for our number one. But what can be even worse than starting too many supplements at once without knowing if they are having a good or a bad effect on us? Number one is not knowing the risks of the medications you are taking. Yeah, turns out prescription medications may be more dangerous than supplements. That's why they are prescriptions and only a doctor can give them to you. But unfortunately, the same argument I made about not messing with supplements can be made about prescription medications as well. You see, all prescriptions may have side effects and they will cause some of your levels and health markers to change. Now the problem here is that, while with supplements, you can take your time and wait to see if they work for you or not, when it comes to medications, we don't have this luxury. There are certain medications that are known to cause fast kidney damage and if you are taking them, you are at risk. Want to know more about them? Watch my video, it's up here and also down in the description. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching, God bless you all. Bye!